Hello there. It just gets worse. Now we hear that apart from lying, Matt Hancock was also very happy to contemplate political blackmail. The more that comes out of the Telegraph Hancock files, the worse it gets for the former health secretary. Now we hear that while Matt Hancock was telling us how overwhelmed the NHS was and that doctors and nurses were on their knees with NHS beds and ICUs full to the brim with the dying, Hancock was also planning to offer NHS spare capacity to French and Italian patients. He was telling the UK populace that there was no more room to call 101, not 999, and stay at home while privately gearing up to get infected patients from France and Italy into NHS beds in the south of England. And here was me thinking the government was fighting an infection, not trying to import it. But worse, it appears that Hancock was using the argument that hospitals in the north were struggling but not in the South, so we could import patients to fill the beds in the South. Obvious question, why not bring patients from the North to the South? Or don't Brits matter? Or worse, is it just Northern Brits that don't matter to Hancock? Well, judging by what the Tories have been getting up to, we now know the answer to that one, don't we? Hancock had even drafted a letter to send to his French counterpart to get this plan rolling and French patients into the UK. And he was talking about sending a letter to Italy too. Ah well, once an EU file. And then we hear that Hancock and his political aide discussed a plot to remove the funding for a learning disability hub from the constituency of one of his fellow Tory MPs, James Daly, the MP for Bury North, to force him to back the Hancock stay-at-home orders. Now Hancock says the threat was never actually made and the funding wasn't stopped but the WhatsApp exchanges show quite clearly that he was 100% behind the concept of such appalling behaviour. And the MP for Rossendale and Darwin, who is a former Tory party chairman, Jake Berry, tweeted in response, This is an absolute disgrace. Hancock should be dragged to the bar of the House of Commons first thing tomorrow morning to be questioned on this. And he also told Times Radio that what Hancock has effectively said is that he wants to weaponise provision of care for disabled children to force MPs to vote in a certain way. This clearly shows someone who is prepared to do anything to get their own way or someone who is drunk on the power of ordering people round and telling people what to do. Now, one really disappointing aspect to all of this is the functioning, or should I say completely non-functioning, of Cabinet collective responsibility during that period. And the apparent spinelessness of the Cabinet members at that time, including Jacob Rees-Mogg. While all this was going on, JRM said that he was unaware that the scientists had said that the stay-at-home period could be reduced from 14 days something I talked about yesterday. If he had known, he would have argued for it to be reduced, he told GB News. But only the top four would have known, and they made all the decisions, JRM said. And those four were the PM Boris Johnson, the Chancellor Rishi Sunak, the Health Secretary Matt Hancock, and the Minister of the Cabinet Office Michael Gove. Sounds like a very slippery quartet to me. And Jacob Rees-Mogg went on to say, The enthusiasm for locking people up was something that was not shared with the rest of the Cabinet. Or the evidence. Well, what were they doing there then? And what were they basing all their decisions on? What else was hidden from 80 or 90 odd percent of the Cabinet? Details on the medical intervention, maybe? Here's some more of what JRM said. 
there were cabinet discussions, but by the time we got to those discussions, most of those decisions had already been made. We had a pre-cabinet briefing for those of us who weren't in the quad, basically to tell us what had been decided. How on earth can the concept of cabinet collective responsibility in the UK survive this? And while people at the top were busy lying, people at the bottom were, and are still, busy dying. Now it won't surprise people to learn that government ministers are now switching on the WhatsApp message self-destruction facility to start wiping their records clean. But their guidance requires them to keep electronic messages discussing government policy to be available for future freedom of information requests. But of course, since the Liz Truss hacked mobile phone affair, we're now all aware that where state security is concerned, ministers prefer to use their own insecure devices and commercial applications and ignore security services advice. But those ministers might also want to consider that depending on the settings they've used, these messages might still be available on their Google Drive cloud account. And maybe Hancock now regrets not deleting those messages instead of entrusting them to a journalist to help him fabricate a new political history for himself. Now, just a few days ago, Singapore released some numbers. Now, the people of Singapore were one of the most, if not the most, compliant where rolling up their sleeves was concerned, with somewhere north of 87% compliance. But one year after that mass act of compliance, perinatal mortality and stillbirths are running at alarming highs. And they're also seeing the highest death rate since their records began 62 years ago. It went from about 2.5% in previous years to over 10% in 2021 and 2022. And for those that have missed it, the UK Health Security Agency was advertising in February this year for someone to fill a new post as the supply operations lead to support the UK's largest medical intervention programme that will be delivered at pace and be a key ministerial priority. And this will cover the UK, Crown Dependencies and Overseas Territories. Getting ready for the next one, it seems. Richard. Did you lose your job, your business or your home and incur debt because of the push for everyone to stay at home by this cut? Did you pay a heavy price for policies and rules that were supposedly dictated by the science? Well, the Matt Hancock WhatsApp leaks show that the science was not being followed. And if these leaks are true, it means you did the right thing, but your government didn't. Even the so-called expert scientific advisors, they went along with Matt Hancock and supported him, even though they had given him contrary advice before the national podium briefings. In other words, if the content of these leaks are true, many of you lost your livelihoods built up over, well, lifetimes and generations. You lost your livelihoods because, once again, a WEF stooge wormed his way into power. And he followed the plan no matter what the cost to the people, but the plan of the WEF. So, if these leaks show some of the science behind the lockdown was not followed, and there was another agenda at play, it means the government owes a lot of people a lot of money. All those who lost their jobs and businesses should be fully reimbursed for loss of earnings and compensated for all the knock-on financial losses, such as loss of home and even, you know, divorces caused by the lockdown that was not necessarily based on science, according to, well, according to these uh, WhatsApp leaks. Hmm... It means that if these leaks prove the government didn't follow the science and lied, well, <laughs> there is no longer any moral obligation to pay anything any further towards the state. And the state has lost all of its legitimacy. And those involved in deceiving the nation should be immediately arrested. Oh, and as for our so-called king, who legitimizes the government, 
He has to stand up and act against the state to protect the people from these liars, which he is obliged to do. To not do so mean he is not working in the nation's interest. I think King Charles has another role to play in a much broader sense, but I'm not going to talk about that. So, do you think you have any moral obligation left to pay tax after what the government has allegedly done? And do you think the people who lost everything after their stay-at-home orders should be fully compensated for their losses? Let us know in the comments section below.